having uh, another session of uh, Azure Power Lunch. Today, our presenter is Adrian Kuroma, uh, who is uh, a global black belt uh, for cybersecurity. And Adrian, please go ahead and introduce yourself. Floor is yours, man. Fantastic. Thanks, everyone. Good morning. Um, uh, yeah, my name is Adrian Corona, and I'm, I know that a global black belt may not mean a lot outside Microsoft, but basically, I am a security architect for Azure Sec Advanced Security um, uh, products. So today, I'm, I'm going to be talking about Security Center, and um, I would like to invite you to go into the, your chat window and tell me if, if you, you can put a plus one or whatever, if, if you guys have, are familiar with Security Center already. I, I would really appreciate to know that. And uh, also, if you have questions that you want to um, ask, you can add through the chat window or feel free to interrupt me. We have uh, we have 30 minutes today, but it's still um, important for me to know what those are. OK, fantastic. So first, I want to start by um, talking a little bit about our cybersecurity reference architecture. This is a fantastic um, uh, piece of, of eye chart that one of my colleagues, Mark Simon, has put together. Um, and you can go to it and uh, uh, and download it. It's 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 customer ready. And and the whole idea of this this cybersecurity reference architecture is to give you a little bit of a glance into the investments that Microsoft is making uh, to be a secure company and to be able to secure our customers as well. So we have a, a, a number of investments in different tools and solutions across the board. And I believe it's important because there are other solutions within our portfolio that integrate uh, the learnings and, um, and benefits from all this, this security um, information and, and threat intel that we get. So things like Azure Sentinel that you probably know about um, and some others like in this case for the Azure world when we talked about um, uh, hybrid cloud, for instance, um, Azure Security Center is a big piece of it. Perfect. And um, again, you can go here to aka.ms um, slash MCRA to download it. There's a video recording. There's a, it is an interactive slide deck. So highly encourage you to go there and look into it if, if, if you have um, a requirement to understand what our, our, our security solution stands point are. Okay, fantastic. So let me switch to the next slide. So first, uh, I want to talk a little bit about some of the some of the things that customers are seeing and, and they are concerned about when we talked about um, the kill chain or otherwise the the threat life cycle, not necessarily kill chain, but um, is some of the, the types of attacks and compromises and attack vectors that we see across the board um, are usually b based on exposure. So either an infected admin through malware or phishing attacks or social engineering, but also vulnerabilities in the products that are deployed in the cloud. So for instance, deploying um, an application that is vulnerable to um, SQL injection attacks or those type of problems, and also in insecurely configured applications and, 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 and so on. Once that's uh, once the initial compromise has been established, there's usually some sort of access and persistence trying to be executed. In in how is that done? Um, it's either trying to do um, escalation of privilege within your web applications, virtual machines, and um, credential set. And obviously, brute force attacks are a big um, a, a trend that we're seeing in our cloud solutions. After that's done, we start looking into that privilege escalation and lateral movement across multiple different uh, cloud services, virtual machines, databases, web apps. And, and last but not least, the exfiltration or misuse, which is an, a very important topic to discuss because not always is about data exfiltration. It's not always about um, attackers trying to, 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 to exfiltrate data or, or, or destroy your, your information. It's, it's also about misuse. And, and a couple of examples I can give you, one of the most prevalent and, and new sort of attacks in the cloud is uh, credential um, storage keys, credential exposure. Um, developers or, or, or administrators checking in um, code in platforms like GitHub or, or, or any of those, um, and that includes uh, storage account keys in their in their code. <clears throat> and attackers are using utilizing those attack vectors to try to compromise those storage accounts and give a misuse, meaning they will use those storage accounts to start putting um, 
either malware and, and being able to serve that malware to other um, compromised endpoints or entities through that, or they can start um, using that for placing illegal content and, 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 and such. So it, it's a very um, widely spread new sort of attack. And those type of things are what Microsoft uh, is, those are some, some of the um, questions or, or challenges that our customers are having when they move to the cloud. And it's not just specifically to the cloud, but we see that proliferation being being part of those part of those attacks. So the, the solution to that, or one of the solutions or capabilities that we put together is Azure Security Center. Um, Azure Security Center, I'm not gonna do a lot of slides. I, I wanna jump into them real quick, but this is the only slide I think that I, that I have about this. Um, what is our stand with Azure Security Center? It's a tool that allows you to validate basically two things, cloud security posture management, um, and also cloud workload protection. How, what does that mean? We have a um, solution, the Azure Security uh, Center is a solution that allows you to validate things like um, hardening of your images, validating and integrating with third party um, uh, tools to provide alerts and recommendations. So, for instance, as you, as you, if you probably saw in the first slide that I have in Cyber Reference Architecture, there's integrations that we're doing with major uh, cloud providers or or, or major um, uh, security providers as well, like Palo Alto uh, or F5 or, uh, and such. We have integrations tied really tied into Azure Security Center that will surface those attack vectors and alerts to through the single pane of glass, if, if you would, um, and among others that I will demo today. And then the cloud, uh, cloud workload protection and advanced threat protection, it's um, an advanced security feature that allows you to have uh, EDR, endpoint uh, protection, um, and it not just, um, uh, and anti-malware, it goes way beyond that. It, it builds upon our Windows Defender EDR solution um, that allows you to, to, to validate um, active threats going on in your environment. So by default, having Security Center enabled, and I'm talking about the standard, I'll talk about tiers here in a minute, but um, you, you'll benefit and you will get all these uh, capabilities built into the product. Um, things like IoT threat protection is a big thing. Many of our customers, when they're talking cloud and IoT, <clears throat> they want to make sure that their workloads are protected, but there's, it's not, there's no easy way to do so. So IoT threat protection is, is um, one of our uh, uh, responses to those type of threats. But last but not least, these capabilities can be extended to other clouds and on-premises servers. So it's not just about VMs and Azure. It goes way beyond that. VMs and Azure, Windows and Linux, of course, that's where we, that's our bread and butter. That's where we were born, and that's um, sort of what we started with. But um, we have support for past workloads, um, meaning web apps, uh, databases, storage accounts, and, and things of that nature, as well as on-premises and other cloud servers. It, we, we have capabilities of deploying agents across the board and having Security Center providing these capabilities in all those um, services makes sense. Um, Ideally, like we, when we talk about cloud architecture, many of our customers are thinking or deploying uh, multi-cloud deployments or multi-cloud applications, uh, which is another topic in itself. Um, and, and I have my my points again it, against it. But um, if that is a decision you and your company have made, absolutely correct the it in and you can or you should be looking at a holistic approach in how to protect those cloud assets so that's that's in a nutshell what azure security center is and and that's the last of my slides so um i know you probably are uh, are sad about it because you probably want to spend the, the the piece of your friday looking at, at microsoft slides but uh, uh, this is not that type of presentation today <laughs> so um i did not see any 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 responses and i don't know if the chat is enabled in in here but if if i just like to know if 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 you guys are using um security center in your organization can i um, speak up i'm i'm afraid there's an issue with the chat window so please speak up if you you know have any yeah uh, absolutely. yeah fantastic thank you okay so um this is security center and for those who don't know again this is the this is the 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 initial portal when you go to the azure portal you have a security center over here on the right hand is, is by default set on your favorites and if not you can get to it through the alt services um 
blade and search for security security center uh, and you will uh, you're going to be able to 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 get to it very quickly um, the first thing you see here is I, <clears throat> you can see the subscription coverage things like po policy and compliance uh, recommendations resource health and alerts um, the the there's there are actionable insights in here <clears throat> like dynamic context um, aware insights that help you improve the overall organizational posture so looking at all these alerts they, they tell me things there there's activities and actions that I need to to take based on 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 what I'm seeing in here so but first off I want to talk about one one very important thing is which is um, subscription settings and, and pricing tier because a lot of people want to know hey well um, how much this cost how, how do you how, how do I do things with it so uh, let me let me go here to pri uh, pricing and settings and ideally well not ideally we, we do have two types of um, uh, uh, tiers one is what we call the standard tier and the free tier big recommendation to every single customer Security Center is not enabled by default because uh, portions of that require an agent to be deployed. But the free tier is free forever. It provides at least with the uh, continuous assessment and secure recommendations. It is it, it's it's an ongoing 24/7 scan of your new and existing environment. So it is you are losing security postures uh, features just by not using it. So if if any if you want to take anything out of this conversation today enable security center free at least it, it is the, your your best choice and unfortunately in our telemetry we see many many of our customers are not doing that so we will really want you guys to start taking advantage of it because we want you to be secure um, as you can see um, the standard tier is what provides you advanced capabilities such as um, uh, just in time vm access regulatory compliance and threat protection and i'm going to be talking a little bit about that today but um before before that, I want to go here to uh, data collection and tell you how does that turn on. Once you turn on or you select your pricing tier, you have the ability to do auto provisioning. So auto provisioning will apply uh, the Microsoft monitoring agent in all your VMs in your subscription. Now this is the same agent um, uh, that we use for OMS or SCOM. So if, if that is installed, the extension is will be uh, still installed as as um, and will be configured to be pushing data to this uh, workspace because we 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 work sort of in tandem with with log analytics, right? Um, again. This is uh, uh, something that you guys want to look at and to turn it on and off. I will always keep it on again for, for critical workloads and across the board. Um, and also you can choose either the default security center uh, workspace that is created for log analytics or you want to choose another one. So in this case, I, I, I selected one and, and that's where it goes. Then the next portion is is a type of, of security event that you want to collect. Um, Basically, it, I mean, you can read it here very, it's very self-explanatory, but the, the number of and the level of, of events that you will be getting uh, out of the, those uh, um, uh, Windows machines. So you, you can either disable the event storage or you want to uh, collect all the events. Now, how is that change? How, how will that impact your uh, data consumption? It depends on how much data you um, consume, right? And, and because that's that's how it works. Now, pricing tier, and just to uh, uh, come, kind of come back, because I, I believe I skipped that. Cost of security center is, is $15 per server per month. And that uh, allows um, a, a number of, of well, an amount of data that can be consumed and analyzed every day, and you can uh, apply that to VMs or VMs instances. You have SQL Server, same thing, $15, $15 per month. App Services, the same thing. Um, storage accounts. You can selectively choose um, which things you can, you will enable or not. So, for instance, if you, if you, if this is an environment where you probably have a few VMs only, and 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 they're tasked for the most part, you can disable that and and save some 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 money, right? So um, I'm going to talk about the, the next portion, and I'm sorry that I'm going so fast. I have 30 minutes, so um, we have a few things that are very important. But the first one, if, if again, um, if you already have turned on Security Center and you've seen the alerts and, and things like that, and, and you want to make sense of, of it because there's there's a lot of recommendations. By default, 
the free tier will show you some something like this. It's a lot of recommendations, a lot of things that you should be doing. But you see this number right here. It's secure score. Secure score is the the way that we um, we pr we try to help our customers to. Um, uh, so, so it's easier for them to understand their security posture. So it's basically the current state of your organization's security. It's the overall state of the protection of identities, endpoints, you know, uh, things like user data, apps infrastructure, and, and, and above. So this is not static. So it, it's going to change constantly in response to new threats and new recommendations that we make in the environment, new things, uh, and, and um, will, will affect the secure score. So. We provide this to, to validate your posture. So if you look in here, I have 536 uh, points out of 12, uh, 1,220. Ideally, what you want to do is um, to uh, mi mimic the, or Security Center kind of mimics the work of a security analyst by re reviewing those security recommendations and applying those algorithms to, to determine how crucial each recommendation is. If I go into a specific, um, environment, I can see recommendations um, here. Like I'm going to go to the so IT demo. I have a bunch of them, and, and I see a secure score. So this allows me to find that I, will, I want to focus on those uh, recommendations that have the higher impact in this score, because they will bring my score and my secure posture to a, a more secure environment. Um, and and also they they may or may not be easy to implement. So <clears throat> it provide we provide guidance on what are some of the things that you look you, you need to look into. And and as I said, we look across the board. It's not just VMs. We we look at uh, multi-factor authentication. Um, you we we look at other other types of. <clears throat> recommendations across the board. So if, if I were to look into this recommendation and say MFA should be enabled on accounts with owner permissions across my subscriptions, um, if I implement this change, it's it's telling me it's only one subscription right now, but if um, if if I implement this change, I will get 50 points into my secure, secure score and that's going to improve my security posture. So I, I believe that it provides a, a really good way for me to prioritize the activities that I want to implement first to, to have a bigger impact and also um, improve my, my posture, right? <laughs> Now, uh, compliance. Uh, compliance, it's a big deal um, for many of us, as in, in possibly if you, you can tell me if, if, or I would like to know if you guys have um, things like, um, or, or compliance requirements for things like PCI, NIST, um, ISO, and such. If, if the answer is yes, uh, the, the, one of the biggest re uh, requests from the customers is how do I monitor, monitor that? How do I make sh sure that I'm in compliance? With, with this regulation. So we took care of, of validating, creating all these controls and scanning your environment. In this case, we scanned entire subscription or subscriptions that I that I have tied to Security Center and, and correlate that against the controls that PCI 3.2 <clears throat> have. And also we um, ignore those controls that have no pertinence on your environment. So for instance, I do not need to implement an, an, a firewall router configuration, or I may do, but only this control applies to me based on the, the things that I have deployed in my environment. Now, as I, as I scroll down, I see this big fat red thing, um, and I keep um, um, expanding, and I see the actual control that, I, that, that dictates that I have IP forwarding should be disabled in my environment in the Linux VM, and I can see also that 21 of my 145 VMs are not complying with this control. So very easily, I can come here and, and understand which are those uh, services and, and those um, what, what's the, what are the affected machines that have that problem. So I can see across the board which machines do not have uh, that that uh, IP forwarding rule enabled, and and again this helps me with my compliance lifecycle, and it eases the or it helps me when auditors come and they want to validate that my uh, organization is compliant. So you can also have the ability to create. Uh, or we'll have the ability to create new specific compliance regulations. The, the ones that I was showing here, PCI, SOC, and such, and such are basically built by Microsoft. But the idea is that you have, uh, you can create a security policy um, and that, that will tie up to a specific re uh, regulations or compliance regulations that you want to create. 
So, um, okay, cool. So now, once I, I looked into that, I see my, my recommendations dashboard. In for when when you enable Security Center for the, the free version, this is what you get. This is the resource security hygiene, and 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 the the alerts and recommendations are uh, spread uh, or breaking upon or breaking by different workload types. So you have um, compute and apps. You have networking, IoT, and you have data and identity. So I'm going to uh, delve uh, a little bit here in, in in compute because there's there's a couple things that are important. Um, some of the recommendations we know they're easy fixes, and we created this one click fix that you can just do literally one click, and it'll fix this. So we know that you have ten of your ten web applications do not have HTTPS enabled, and we know that's a big risk. Um, so or medium risk, and we want to fix it. One one click, I can click this part, and and it will fix my issue. It will enable that or set that uh, application to uh, be only accessible through HTTPS. Possibly there are going to be some of these are not that easily implemented because you're going to have to validate that your application is correctly configured and such and such. But it's um, it's an easy thing that you can you can go over here and fix. We look also into app services, so past services like functions and web apps, and we have recommendations based on configuration. And also, we look across the board and see, hey, well, you, you, your application, it is behind a WAF, which is good, which is what we want, right? Um, if you don't, we will be able to tell you that and and have remediation steps, which include, hey, deploy a, a app gateway, deploy a firewall like from a third party as well. I mean, you have multiple choices in here. Containers, it's in preview right now, but it's it's heavily utilized as well. You can see uh, a lot of our customers are looking into some of the recommendations, role-based access control policies at, at, the, at the cluster and um, uh, level, and also the, your containers per se. We look at configuration and validate that um, the security features are turned on. Um, <clears throat> another one which I was mentioning is IoT. IoT hubs is are are very. There's a lot of uh, hype around IoT in the cloud, and and uh, as such, we provide IoT hub and and um, recommendations for for securing your your environment. Um, let me let me. I hope it it doesn't take too long to load. Um, but if not, I'll switch over to another piece because I know we we're kind of short on time, and there's a few things that I want to come across. Networking, um, networking. Um, we have a few things, just uh, recommendations, of course, about your subnets uh, configuration, DDoS protection being enabled or not. But um, to me, one of the, the 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 important things that you can see here is your um, network map. A network map and adaptive network hardening is one of the things that we provide here, where we draw this this good map across your environment, and we see all these VMs and have all, and we visualize all the alerts going on on each VM. So I can zoom in into this uh, machine that has some some sort of alert, and um, I can try to validate what the alert is about. Oh, IP forwarding in this machine is is not enabled. So at a, with, at a glance, I can see the entire posture of my network configuration across Azure. But also, I provide recommendations. This is the uh, topology view that shows me things like, well, my subnet is not um, configured correctly uh, because there's uh, there's no NSGs associated to that. So a very easy way for me to understand if there's an, a, a subnet with no security configurations, which is absolutely a no-no to have. But now I can also switch my layer to allow traffic. So this is awesome to me because it provides me a view, a real view of who has access to what and who can talk to, to whom. So when we talk about a networking zero trust hype that it's going around is um, you can easily see that all the communication across these VMs is enabled and it's it's valid across or through this subnet but I can also see things that are not happening that should happen so for instance if I configure um, an, a an advanced uh, firewall or, or um, I have an Azure firewall a next-gen firewall in a, another subnet that I must um, the, the, the communication across subnets must traverse that for zero trust purposes. Well, um, I can see that that's bypassing that. So I should see that hop. If, if I see this 
machine communicating to this one, um, I see a discrepance and it's not going through that NVA environment. So I can very easily understand that with, with, uh, with this visualization. So again, very powerful type of, 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 of alerts. They're dynamic. You, you can uh, absolutely look into, into that. And um, I'm getting close to, to the time, so I'm going to speed up a little bit. Um, security alerts is one of the, the bread and butter of what we do. It's a correlation of all the events. And I can show you here, we have a lot of events coming in. So things that we know that are suspicious double execution, suspicious things going on. And this is part of what we collect through your EDR environment. So um, ATP is, is enabled and we see an alert on those type of things. So suspicious command being executed. It's nothing necessarily wrong with this. And I can drill down and see what command it, that was. Oh, guess what? And that user echo, um, I'm trying to um, um, possibly open a, a shell or create a, a dump dummy text file in, um, in, my, in my system. So that's not something that you would normally use um, uh, the net command for. So we're just going to raise a flag as a high, high alert because we know and we've seen attacks like this across the board in the world, and we will alert you on it. But um, alerts by themselves are good to uh, to find out problems, but ideally, and, and if you see here, I, if I sort by detected by, we not only look at Microsoft alerts. Um, let, me, let me just click one more time. Um, we we also correlate alerts through by Microsoft anti malware or uh, well I have a bunch of, of them here but you can see things by um, uh, by by uh, F5 or um, or Cisco or some of those integrations that we have but the idea in in where this this process shines and I know it's a over overused terminology which is um, uh, uh, machine learning. When we we make use of that correlation of machine learning and AI, and again, I know that a lot of our customer our partners and, and a lot of people are, are overusing that term, but we use that correlation here to create an, a security alert. So an incident, an incident, it's composed by one or what by multiple alerts that are somehow related to each other. So we can see here a, a bunch of alerts that are included in this automatic incident. Um, and they put together and I can see and I can track them and, and understand what happened. So I can see suspicious double execution file being executed in one machine. So this this doesn't look right. A PDF.exe so possibly some phishing attack or some malware being dropped in, in, in that computer in that system. And then I see um, also some volume shadow copy. So there's some some attacks in here where I'm I'm deleting all the the, the backups on on that machine. Then I see an, another suspicious process being executed, uh, genhash.exe, which is a sort of a well-known um, attacker. Uh, well, not an attacker. It's a well well-known exploited tool that it's made use to um, to generate hashes and and things of that nature. And then also. The next step will be, well, I'm going to try to do, uh, again, create uh, or dump some dummy uh, data in here. Maybe I'm, I'm scanning ports, I'm, I'm doing some, some sort of um, uh, um, data um, reconnaissance. And then I also see a SVC host process executed, which is nothing wrong with SVC host. If, if you're a Windows guy, you know what we're talking about. But the problem is the context. The context from Z alert generation, this is not a reg regular context. And also the, the login ID and the parent ID does not make much sense. So I can see here a report on what, why are we flagging that? Um, you can get a lot of information on that specific threat and you can see why are we flagging it? Why is it, what's the problem? How do I identify what are recommended actions to, to, to remediate this, this threat? Um, so last but not least is we, we noticed the anti-malware action was detected. So fortunately it seems that we, we, we blocked the, um, some, some malicious payload um, before there was some lateral, lateral uh, uh, compromise. But this is a security incident that I did not have to do anything to, to validate. So again, it, this is a short overview of Security Center. Um, there's other capabilities just like um, adaptive application controls, like automatic whitelisting of my applications, meaning um, I will create a, a, an intelligent um, 
profile of the applications run in my in my servers or VMs, and I will provide recommendations on what are the things that you are, are able to run on, on top of specific rules that I want. So I want to allow only Microsoft and Mozilla um, executables to be run in the systems. That's great, but I can also validate if, or I can also create um, or or or, or um, uh, a, adapt my rules and recommendations. So we can see, hey, you have this group here with a, a number of VMs. You, we notice that these VMs have run stuff from Google, Azure, Code Sign-In, and th this type of applications are common. Do you want to whitelist them for uh, everyone or just one user specifically? And we do this automatically. If you guys are into desktop support, you know that that's hard to do. Um, it's not easy. It's not sim It's not a simple task. So we try to simplify that. And remember, this can be applied across your environment, not just Azure, but also on-premises, AWS, Google, VMware, physical servers, doesn't matter. All right. So with that, um, I want to close with a couple thoughts. Again, um, number one, please turn on Security Center. Please do that. I mean, it's free, just the free tier. Don't worry about the, the, the rest. There's a lot of documentation on what to look for, how to start. But if you don't know where to start, um, try secure score and try validating some of those recommendations is, is the easiest way or is the best recommendation that I can possibly give you today. Um, there, there's a lot, a lot more things that uh, we cover or we did not cover, like advanced threat protection for storage accounts. We, we validate and create profiles about what type of data and clients access that storage accounts data, what IPs are commonly communicating to it. And then if we see a deviation from that, we will automatically create an, an alert. So, um, and, and bottom line is, is remember on the first slide that I showed you, Microsoft has made a, about a billion dollar investment in security products and security threat intelligence. And all those products provide threat intelligence across the board. So things like Exchange Online, SharePoint, Azure AD, Xbox, all those products and services enrich our, our threat intelligence, which I, I would argue that we have the most um, uh, or the, not, not the largest necessarily, but the most varied and, and the, the, mo the richest uh, threat intel in the world, um, because we know the endpoints, we know Azure, we have, we have business across the board, and we have a lot of intelligence. And all of that stuff, it's put to your fingertips. All of that intelligence is now, you can apply that without any knowledge, without customizing rules, without having any type of, of additional hunting or, or anything of that matter. You can absolutely do that if you want, but it's not necessary. Um, so with that, I, I will close. And I, I know I, I'm a little bit over time, but I'm, I, I can still stay here for a few minutes and open uh, uh, for some questions if you have any. Yeah, folks, if you have any questions, please uh, unmute and ask. And sorry for the I am snafu. I mean, we'll take care of it next time, hopefully. All right. I. Uh, Thanks, Adrian. And Thanks for the presentation, man. Not a problem. Thank you all, and uh, really have a great it. Friday. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I will post the recording. Uh, Thanks, Adrian, for the presentation. And thanks, everyone, for joining. Have a great weekend, everyone. You as well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.